1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 31 to 33. Wherefore, whether therefore ye eat or drink, and whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Give none offence, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the Church of God, even as I please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. Do all to the glory of God is the title of our adult Sunday school message taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 31 to 33. The actions of the Christian, whatever it may be, is to be done to bring honour to God's name. This is the guiding principle for God to bless the Christian life. And all that brings honour to our God must concur with His revealed word. The Christian, therefore, is to be a diligent student of His word, to seek to know God's will and to do it. If we do not know what God says, then we will do our own things, isn't it? That's not good. William MacDonald said, well, there are two great rules to guide us in all our Christian lives. The first is the glory of God, and second is the welfare of our fellow men. Paul gives the first of these here, Therefore, whether ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. And he further applied, Christian young people are often faced with decisions as to whether a certain course of action would be right or wrong for them. Here is a good rule to apply. Is there any glory for God in it? Can you bow your head before you, before you participate in it and ask the Lord that He will be magnified by what you are about to do? That's a good test, isn't it? May the Lord bless His people to help us to do all to His glory. And in verse 32, it says here, Give none offence, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. The word offence comes from the root word to strike or to trip. Here, in a negative sense, expressed, give none offence. Counsel to inculcate such a habit or way of life that does not stumble others. But look to bless others, always looking for their well-being, the welfare. Their welfare is the thrust of this thought. Give none offence. This offence is measured by a God-given, cultivated and heightened conscience that built strongly upon the foundation of Scripture. So if we would take time to know God in His Word and to understand His ways, then we would know how to walk, isn't it? That we would not give offence to the people outside, to the people inside the church. And this demeanor of life is toward all men and summarized by the Jews, which is Israel, the Gentiles, which describe the unbelieving, and finally, believers in the church of Jesus Christ. So it encompasses all people. And the Lord wants us to indeed uh, bless, be a blessing to the people around us, not just within our home, to our own family members, 
not just to our colleagues in the workplace, not just in the church in which we interact with the people of God, but also to the world at large. Do good, in other words. Do no harm to others. That's the exhortation that the Lord gives to us. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. The Apostle Paul's life was given over to serve his Lord, and that is translated to doing good for fellow men. He gave his life to the service of God's people. He shared concerning the dedication that God placed in his heart. He said, Yea, if I be offered unto the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. And so he labored joyfully. Uh, how to labor joyfully? How to give out a tract joyfully? Well, we have to ask the Lord, isn't it? We have to pray and ask God right, to uh, endow us with a joyful spirit so that we may do something good for him. Uh, that's a great blessing that God bestows upon us uh, that we received from him. And so the Apostle Paul says, Yea, and if it be offered, if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy. If I can do something for you. Right? So you remember Elijah when he met with a, a woman who was a widow of a prophet who died. And she had two sons. And they had, at that time, when father died, left with a debt that the household has to Bear, and the result of it was that the two servants would have to give themselves to be servants or slaves. It was a sad time for the widow. And so she met the prophet of God, and Elijah said to her, What can I do for you? And she said, I'm in trouble, I need help. And what did Elijah said to her, what do you have in your house? He said, I have nothing left except this little pot of little oil that I have. And that's it. There's nothing left. And so Elijah said to the good woman, go together with your sons, find as many pots as you can. And there he took the little oil and he began to pour into the empty vessels of the pot. So they, the oil continued to pour and continued to fill all the vessels that the family could take hold of until there was no more vessel they could hold. And Elijah said to the woman, you go and sell all this oil. It would be enough for you to pay for the debts that you owe and it would be enough for you to save your sons. God was with his people. God sent his servant Elijah to save that family. And God can use you too. As he used the Apostle Paul, who said, Yea, if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, 
I joy and rejoice with you all. He did not seek his own profit. He could have, but he did not. And it was joy for him. He saw the value of the eternal more than the temporal. And the Lord wants us to see the eternal, isn't it? When the Lord Jesus Christ would return again, he would bring with him not only a mansion that is prepared for us, but his rewards for all that we would do in the name of Christ. He would bring his reward with him. It will be a joyful day. It was more blessed, most blessed, to learn from such a man. As our Lord Jesus says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Right? You have given, right? you seem to have lost something, and yet the Lord says you are more blessed. How can we understand except by a divine anointing, isn't it? That we can understand the equation of giving and yet being more blessed when you seem to have lost something. Ah, so Paul learned this lesson. It was most blessed to learn from such a man of God the lesson of taking hold of the things of true value. His ambition is his Lord's ambition for him to be a vessel for the gospel. And he fulfilled it with great distinction. May we learn from his example. May the Lord, good Lord, bless his people that we may indeed find this new week that he has given us a useful time, a useful time uh, that our life may be profitable, uh, profitable uh, in the sight of the Lord to do his good will. And indeed, as we meditate upon what Paul says in Philippians 2, 17, yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. May the Lord give to us the joy of service. May the Lord help us to see that we are not serving uh, anyone else but our Lord himself in our service of the people around us. And I pray that the Lord would help us to see and understand so that the benevolence, the generosity of His people uh, may be felt and may be, may be uh, uh, blessed in the lives of the people around us. May the Lord help us that this church may grow from strength to strength. Let us pray. Father, we thank Thee for Thy Word. Thank Thee that we may, by Thy grace, do all to Thy glory. Bless Thy people. Grant us faith to please all men in all things not seeking our own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. Strengthen thy people. Grant us the faith to offer upon our sacrifice and service by faith, with joy and with rejoicing and with thanksgiving. For thy own honour and glory, help us. Send us forth this new week to do thy bidding, Bless thy word that we may, it may bring forth fruit in the lives of thy people to the blessing of those around us. This I pray with thanksgiving 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.